So one of the things I really like about Tena Ecuador is the food. In this particular Amazon jungle town, surprisingly, the food is amazing. There's a lot of really good options. There's a lot of great food, some good steaks, some good ceviche. Um, there's just a lot going on in the food scene. And to me, it was a big surprise. I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk through a few of the, the restaurants I like and show you where they are, what they are. And uh, also probably gonna go get some tacos or maybe a steak. The food in this town is better. I'd say it's better than anywhere else I've experienced in Ecuador outside of outside of Quito or like Guayaquil. Better options, um, better service, and good prices for what you get. So here we go. I'm all of two blocks from my house, two blocks away. I walk down this set of stairs and there is this awesome little park down here. And in the center of the park, there's a taco bar, a little taco restaurant that I've been hitting up a lot lately. It's a little bit pricier than um, the tacos I get in Quito, but it's also worth it. It's good food. And it's a good spot for the kids if you got kids. So like I said, I've got a apartment, four bedroom apartment, $235 a month, two blocks away from here. Here's this great city park. All the kids come out to play and say hi. And uh, it's just a friendly spot and very safe. This is the other thing about Tena Ecuador. Um, Napo isn't necessarily the safest pro province in Ecuador. It's by far not the most dangerous, but it's not as safe as some of the mountain towns per the statistics. But the town of Tena, the city of Tena actually is very safe. So right here, Taqueria El Chulito. Taqueria El Chulito right there. That's my taco jam right there. That's where I go. This Hello. is the spot Hello. where I always... Hello! Uh, hello. Uh, I... One question. Si, dime. Uh, ah, si hablo inglés. Si, sí, sí. hablamos español. Ah, ya. Yeah. Tiene canal de YouTube. Si. Si. Ya. ¿Cuál es? Uh, Salida de Mapa. En el inglés, fall off the map. Salida. Salida. Salida de Mapa. Salida de Mapa. Si. En el inglés, porque es en el inglés, es fall off the map. Ah. Ya. Yeah. All right, got interrupted by a couple kids. But uh, this is the place that I come to eat tacos. This is the lugar donde yo comer tacos in Tena. This is the guy that takes my order. And uh, it's good, it's great. Buen comida, mejor tacos in, in Tena, Ecuador. I think he's a little embarrassed, poquito ver vergüenza. Continuing on, because he's not quite open yet. I'm gonna get food somewhere else. It's like uh, 4.30 in the afternoon. I think they open at five. I'm about to walk through the bar district of Tena. There is a particular bar district, party district. So let's go walk through that area. Taxis are honking at me. Birds are chirping. Traffic's moving by. It is a Wednesday afternoon. The neighbors are waving. Life is good. Buen vida. Life is good. Very friendly town, as you can see. And so like I was talking about safety in, in, in Tena, this is one of the few places, one of the few cities in Ecuador where I think um, the police are actually responsive and responsible. One of the problems in Ecuador is like, something happens, a store gets robbed or you get robbed or whatever, you call the police and they either don't show up or they show up and they're like, yeah, so, right? There's nothing they can do. Um, what I've seen and what I've experienced in this town is a more responsible leadership from the police. So I remember I was sitting in a restaurant one day and there was some sort of scene outside 
there was an Ecuadorian guy and a couple of people were trying to rob him. And within, you know, like within the first moment I heard him yell, it was maybe five seconds, five, 10 seconds. And the police were on the scene. There was a police officer maybe half a block away. He ran there. And within two or three minutes, there were like three or four police cars. And they took it seriously. They didn't, like if you're in Quito and you get robbed and you call the police two hours later. All right, had to stop the video, delete some old videos, change a few camera settings. If the camera settings are different, it's because I was messing around with my camera and I don't really know what I'm doing. But I think it'll be all right. You tell me, is it all right? Anyway, I forgot what I was talking about. I think I was talking about crime and safety in Ecuador and specifically in Tena, Ecuador and how the police here, they just seem a little more responsible and within town, people seem to feel and behave as though they are a lot more secure. This is one of the few places in Ecuador where I see families out in the park at night. Um, like in Quito, you do not see families with kids in the park at night. Like you might see them in the day, but lately less and less, Quito is less and less secure. Um, in Tena, people feel safe. Are they really safe? I think the statistics point to yes. I think the statistics point to this being a place that is one of the islands of safety in Ecuador and has enough of a safety culture, enough of um, a responsible administ administration within the government and the police to maintain that, continue that into the future. I could be wrong, I don't know for sure, but here I am on a Wednesday afternoon walking around with a camera. I have zero concerns. Nobody is going to rob me here. It's not going to happen. Just... If I was in Quito, in the best parts of town, I would be looking over my shoulder. In the worst parts of town, I would not have my camera out. I just wouldn't do it. Here, I feel a lot safer. Am I misguided? I don't think so. But come check it out see it for yourself see whether i am right or not another thing i really like about Tena ecuador is the climate t-shirt and shorts weather it's warm most of the time it's warm but not hot this is amazon jungle but it is not way down in the amazon we still have a few hundred meters of elevation so it's warm it's comfortable it's not brutally hot it can get there Depending on the season, there are a few days per year that they're a little hot for me, but most of the time it's just nice. So I'm going to flip this camera around and show you another restaurant place I discovered last night. I went and visited this place because I'm down to my last few days in Ecuador and I really wanted to splurge. So I splurged and I went to this place. Good ambiance, good spot. This is, like I said, Wednesday afternoon, so it's kind of dead, but Saturday night, that place is hopping. And if you are a big spender and you want to splurge, that is the spot. That's the place for you to go. Which way am I gonna go now? I'm gonna walk down the waterfront, the Malacan. So Tena's got a beautiful river, a river that runs through town. There's also a little island in the, in the middle of the river that's got, um, bunch of animals you can go see it's got monkeys it's got uh, one or two tapers tapirs not sure how to pronounce it basically a big long-nosed pig friendly pig not exactly a pig that's not what a taper is but it's, it's a little island park in the middle of town with a bridge that you can walk and go down some stairs to go visit but this is the waterfront and at night this area along here is hopping and it's not like hopping like club scene it's hopping like a bunch of families this area is amazing at night i've eaten here a few times this is like if nothing else is open i'll go to nachos they're a little pricey a little greasy not the best but it's adequate food it's like normal for other parts of Ecuador. It's not the best here. Public bathrooms. So you've got some public bathrooms right here. 
right on the waterfront, right on the Malapon. Nice little park. There's always kids in this park. Even you come down here nine or 10 o'clock at night on a Friday or a Saturday night or Sunday night, there's still kids in this park. There's still families in this park. It is actually quieter now in the afternoon on a Wednesday than it is at night typically when the parents are off work and they've got time to take their kids to the park. That is how safe people feel people are in this part of Ecuador. A little more look down at the river. Hello. Hello. Kids skateboarding. Hello. Lots of people saying hello. Up here, you've got one of the three bridges across the river. There's three of them. So this is a footbridge. Further up, there's another footbridge that also lets you get down to the island I mentioned. And behind me, there is a car bridge. Trendy little shops full of chocolate products. The economy in this town seems to be better than most of Ecuador. Tourism is still popping here. There is still a lot going on and uh, it's a good spot. Walking under the bridge here like a troll. I have had dinner at this restaurant up here. It's all right. Like it's, you're gonna overpay a little bit. It's very touristy, but it is a known quality it's not gonna be bad food. You're gonna get good service, you're gonna get good food, but you're gonna pay a little bit high price to eat in this restaurant right here, right next to the river. It is designed to be a tourist restaurant. And there are some, this is kind of the zone of the higher end restaurants here. This is where the nice restaurants are. Occasionally I come down here and I eat at Cafe Tortuga. That is another one of my spots. Um, I think it's right here, Cafe Tortuga. And I think I'm gonna head in there right now. So we're gonna take a little trip into Cafe Tortuga because why not? I'm hungry. Hello. All right, got my coffee fix, got my belly full, and uh, had a good chat with uh, some other foreigner in there, uh, some kid whose name I forgot already, but uh, a Peace Corps volunteer who's out here in Kenna doing his thing. And uh, we chatted a little bit about the river sports out here. That is another thing about this part of Ecuador. It is a hub for outdoor activities for whether it's hiking in the jungle or um, the rivers. This is the jumping off point for getting deep into the Amazon jungle or for river sports in Ecuador. And Ecuador is one of the best places in the world for kayaking and river rafting. You, uh, you've got all sorts of rivers out here. You've got all classes. You've got some great instructors. It's very affordable to learn out here. And a little full belly, I'm having a hard time walking and talking at the same time. And out here, you've got these really warm, clean Amazon rivers. These are tributaries to the upper Amazon that just fall down the uh, eastern slopes of the Andes Mountains. So instead of learning in some place where the rivers are dirty, the water's dirty, muddy, or polluted, you're in one of the cleanest places in the world. And it's comfortable, it's warm, and it's inexpensive. Did I mention it's inexpensive? Um, great place to learn, great place to get into kayaking and river rafting. I learned out here, I learned in this very town when I first came to Ecuador, I took a kayaking class and uh, kind of got my ass kicked by the Napo River. But um, this, is, this is the spot, this is the place. Once again, I'm gonna turn the camera around and show you what I'm looking at. This is one of the three little bridges across the river. A lot of graffiti on the uh, little tower here where there's a lookout up there. Here's the river. There is the Malacan, which is kind of the zone of fancy restaurants and tourist restaurants. This is the little island. 
in the middle of the river. It's just called La Isla, the island. That's its name. And I think it's closed right now. There's a little, there's a little guard in there doing his thing. But as you can see, the stairs down, it's after five o'clock. So the stairs down, locks on there. This is really a must visit when you come to Tenna. And it's a must visit because it's beautiful. It's a must visit because wildlife in here is very accessible. On the weekdays, you can just go in here and you can walk around and explore on your own. On the weekends, you'll really get pressured by the volunteers to uh, give them a tip in exchange for a tour. And what it really is paying for is um, giving food to animals that should not be fed by humans. But it's still an awesome spot. It's still worth visiting. If you come to Tenna, I would visit, but I would try to come on a weekday, try to come in off hours, like 10 o'clock in the morning on a Tuesday, rather than, than Saturday afternoon when the volunteers are, volunteers are out and they are hustling for tips by um, hand feeding monkeys and other wildlife to uh, entertain the tourists. The town is kind of divided into two halves. The main part of the town is on this side, but the university side of the town is on that side. And I would say the higher end, more exclusive, better part of town is right back there near that bar district that I walked through. There's more rentals available up on this other side and cheaper rentals. There's a lot of places that, a lot of places out there that rent for like 150 to 200 dollars a month for smaller apartments but like i said i i kind of watched the markets for a while and got a place that it's not real fancy it's not a nice apartment but it is huge it's, like i said four bedroom for 225 with all utilities included walking distance to here like four blocks so walking distance to everything you need in town hard to beat that all right I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk up to my other favorite restaurant in town, a place called Bucci Roto. Bucci is, I don't know if it's an Ecuadorian term or just Spanish. There's a lot of terms that I think are Spanish and they're actually just Ecuadorian slang, but what I'm told is Bucci is this part on a bird, right? Like birds that have a big pocket right here where they store food, that's a Bucci. So this place is called Bucci Roto, in other words, they fed the bird so much it broke its bucci, right? So like, the name fits. Um, you get a lot of food there. It's really good food. It's one of my favorite restaurants in town and where I eat almost every day, even though it is a little bit on the expensive end because they are super good, a lot better than most Ecuadorian restaurants about customizing your order. So I always get the same thing in there or variations of the same thing. I always get um, Minestra con carne, which is beans with meat or minestra con pollo, beans with, with uh, chicken. And I usually substitute the rice for pataconas, the, the little um, kind of fried smashed plantain discs, because um, I don't like eating a big pile of rice. And they're also really good for me about doing a low salt version of it or no salt. I ask for no salt on the meat and the meal ends up being um, reasonably salted rather than very salty. So just a tip, this restaurant, amazing food, really good. But when you go there, you might need to customize your order a little. If you don't like eating really salty food, they love their salt. That is true of most of Ecuador. They use a lot of salt. So here we go. Um, super happy I have this new camera because I think it's got pretty good low light performance. And as you can see, it's getting late. It's getting a little dark out. I think it's about six o'clock at night from the look of it. So, flip the camera around. This is more or less the center of town. Once again, I'm totally comfortable walking around in this town with my camera out. So, you see this place right here? Cafeteria, cafeteria y peridios. Bucci Roto, right there. That's my spot. And this is the area and you can see there's quite a bit of police presence out here it is rush hour traffic so this is about as busy as you will see the main street 
this is this is about as chaotic as this town gets this is probably um, one of the worst intersections for traffic and the worst time of day one of the things that I thought was really cool about this town that I did not see in Quito at all is if you step out and you're at a crosswalk most of Ecuador they're not gonna let you cross but here watch this taxi he'll stop the moto didn't that was uncool usually that was a bad example that was a really bad example yeah so this is Bucci Roto that's the spot so that was a bad example um, it goes to show like if I'm if I got the camera on and I try to give you an example of the culture in China I end up with a few drivers that really don't want to collaborate jerks but more often than not and more than other parts of Ecuador the drivers will actually stop and let you cross especially the taxi drivers I swear to God the taxi drivers in Quito are a menace they will run you over as soon as look at you they're jerks um, here maybe just a little smaller town a little slower pace of life and they kind of know they need to treat people better and not be complete jerks because in a smaller city people are more likely to know and remember each other so they're a little more polite they slow down a little they'll let you cross the street there are plenty of places Woo! loud music there are plenty of places to stay I don't know if you've noticed in the background there's hostels everywhere this is a tourist town I'm not gonna hit the the other kind of main part of town there's like a Tia which is one of your like big grocery store chains there's Mercados which are like the big outdoor markets or in this case it's kind of got a covered area there are some hip trendy shops and tons of little restaurants tons of parks this is if you were coming to Ecuador and say say you're a digital nomad and you're looking for a spot to just hang out for three months I'd come here this is the part of Ecuador I come to say you are an expat you are leaving the US you are coming to Ecuador and you don't know where to start and you want to start with a place that's not so high elevation like Quito not as expensive as Cuenca and um, a little slower pace of life a little smaller and a little warmer and you don't want to deal with the insecurity and the danger of the coast right now because the coast it's a mess right now most of it not all of it but most of it I'd come here this is if I were new to Ecuador and I wanted to get my feet wet in a way that felt safe and comfortable this is where I'd start Tena Ecuador